Restraint's a difficult um, topic to discuss, isn't it? But it seems to me it's more about a balance of trying to provide a supportive um, care environment for a person um, versus the, the risks and the safety element. I agree that restraint is a difficult word and has diff often different meanings for people, but restraint the word restraint is no different from a lot of the other language that's grown up over the years and of course it's based on a very medical model. Tracy Payne and Anne McFarlane are experts in the field of minimising restraint in care homes. Today they're going to bring together their experience by looking at four drama scenarios. It's their task to decide whether the examples shown constitute restraint and how we can learn from them. Let's have a look at the films. Bob! Bob! What's going on? Look, Bob, we're very, very close to the main road here. I need you to get away from the door. Come on, go and sit in your favourite chair. Go on. Look, I want you to come away from the door. It's very dangerous, that main road, Bob. Go on, go and have a sit down. I'm really busy today. I don't want you on my list of things to do, do I? Oh, dear. I think there's... Um a few elements of restraint in there. There's the physical restraint of not allowing Bob to be able to go out of the door, but I think the way that she's speaking to him, the emotional and psychological response that she's giving to him is really uh, not very good at all, is it? No, I mean, there was no understanding of why he wanted to go out of the door. Mm. and. It was almost, how quick can I move into a safe place and That's get on with the next task? Yeah, she was more concerned about her day, really, wasn't she? Definitely, and she also didn't seem to have any real understanding of Bob as, a, as an individual. I think it's critical that people find out who the person was um, before they arrived. It isn't just about keeping somebody in one place or quiet or whatever or less distressed. I think it is about finding things that people like to do in, in accordance with what their lifestyle was like. Absolutely. I think there might be an improvement here on the design so that Bob is able to find, easily find the door that he can go through and can have access independently without having to wait for somebody to take him out. So perhaps this home could look at which doors are easily accessible and easy to find. Mm. It would be nice to be able to support Bob to go through that door. There is a need to have sufficient staff to enable people to, to enjoy the outdoors. No, I agree. Shall we have a look at the second film, Anne? What's up? You look like a monkey. <laughs> oh, you finished, Joe. Finished. Well done. Good girl. Uh, Good soup, wasn't uh, it, today? Very nice. And you finished your drink as well. Good girl. Oh, yeah, listen, I've got to go and put these in the kitchen, Joan, and oh. it's your nap time in half an hour, oh. so I'll be back in a moment. Oh. Yeah, it's a lovely day, isn't it? Good girl. Um, very uncomfortable to watch. There's elements, obviously, of physical restraint again there preventing the lady from, from moving from her chair, but more importantly, how she was speaking to the lady, not treating her with dignity at all. But it, it's a much wider picture, isn't it? It's about mm. the person being able to be as independent as they can be and want to be mm. um, within an environment that lets them do that. I think it brings into question the whole purpose of meal times, the lack of social... Um, the social event, the enjoyment of meal times. There's no wonder this lady wanted to try and leave her chair. She was so bored, and it was um, she was alone. Um, and on a recent inspection uh, that I undertook, um, while a number of the people were gathered round a, a table and eating their meal, there were other residents who. Um, were sitting on their own and one particular person was actually facing the wall and when I asked why she was left in that position they said well she's got challenging behaviour um, and that's the way we can reduce that to... And that probably would increase that person's frustrations rather than, than deal with them. I know that um, the smaller more open plan 
um, household units that are, are now being built, particularly for people with dementia, really prevent uh, the need for restraint because there's very subtle supervision from the staff who are living with people for the day. Everybody participates in meal times, meals are cooked in the households, um, and there's general involvement in everyday purposeful activity. There'd never be a reason why you would keep somebody restrained with a table in front of them. Let's have a look at the next film. Come on, David. Come on, David. Calm down. Calm down. Right, I've got your medication. You wake up the other residents. Now you take your medication. That's it. Now this is every night. There we are. That's it. Good. Good. Oh, night, night. I would say that there was an element of chemical restraint here, uh, quite unnecessary, I would imagine, if she'd actually spent some time. Um, trying to find out what the matter was with, with the gentleman when he, when he woke. And she was obviously quite annoyed, the fact that he'd woken again, uh, night after night, which um, really says that she's not really looked into why this gentleman is waking. You're just thinking about who he was, who he is as a person. Uh, is he a night person? You know, I know lots of people that, you know, wake up in the night and go to bed by day. So what did he do before, you know, for a living? Uh, no access to a light switch. Mm. You know, he might have been an avid reader. Mm. You know, no, nothing around him, nothing to occupy him in the night because you know, don't necessarily just have to close your eyes and go to sleep. So yeah. it's interesting that we make that assumption that we all need to lay down at a certain time Turn the light out, whoever we are, That's you know, it's right. about knowing the person. Yeah, I think care planning is, is so essential that we assess the person over a 24-hour period. Um, perhaps we need to look at what sort of a day this gentleman has, um, what medication he takes during the day that may be causing concerns during the night, and an assessment of, well, if this is happening every, every night, what time is it happening, what precedes that happening, and, and certainly what measures do the staff take that help him to get back to sleep again and record those on, on a care plan. You know, it's getting back to asking people, isn't it? There, there's no, you know, acknowledgement that he may, you know, this gentleman knows what he needs, but nobody's actually asked him. No, no. It's always an assumption that, you know, this is what might be necessary. That's right, yeah. Okay. Let's have a look at the next film. Come on, Jean. It's lunchtime. We'll be late. Everybody's waiting for us. Come on, that's it. Fish and chips today, your favourite. That's right. Oh. There we are. In you go. That's it. Good girl. There you go. There mm. you go. Good girl. Good girl. Up you go. There we are. Come on then, good girl. Again, speaking to a, um, like a child, moving and handling issues there and rushing the lady, quite outpacing her. Um, while that's um, evidence of very poor practice, I'm not sure actually if people would see that as restraint. What do you think, Anne? I see that as very subtle restraint. It goes on all the time, day in and day out. I mean, she was isolated, sitting there. Um, I don't know about you, but if I wake up from a sleep, I, I like to comb my hair, wash my face, and feel I'm ready for the next event, whatever that is. And she's now restrained from doing anything other than getting to that meal table. The overriding issue for me is that people often living in residential settings are and at home even, are living in another person's time frame. And in this case, it sounds like it's the staff time, doesn't it? And the task that has to be completed is, is lunchtime and everybody has to conform to a certain time and, and certainly not offering any 
a person-centred approach there for what was right for that lady. If you live in somebody else's time frame where the overriding um, comment is often, wait a minute, wait a minute, not in this case, it's like, hurry up. But you can't be yourself. I think the thing we haven't mentioned, which I think is critical in every single setting, is that there is a residence committee, that it's as a, 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 a residence group, it doesn't have to be so formal, it has to be able to involve residents in all aspects. So it's about choosing the things that go into the sitting room, into their own rooms, into the garden. Because how do you how can you call something home where people have not had their opinions expressed or listened to and taken on board really? As nurses and carers, we need to take up that challenge. Um, every day we're faced with those challenges, um, a balance really for for each individual between independence and safety, and we mustn't move away from the person and what's right for them to be able to live a full and uh, meaningful life in, in a safe as possible way as, uh, as we can do. And so really for me, um, restraint is the last resort.